When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Hi folks, we're here with a special edition of the Meta Show. Surprise, it's me hosting, not Brisk. Brisk is playing with a toy, well, a model ship that he's got to get finished for a, um, uh, words have escaped me, a uh, competition. So us three lovely uh, chaps are here to talk about the recent fights in EVE and the conflicts around them. Joining me today is... Hey everybody, yeah, I was going to say... Brisk, you've changed. Mark is gone. I know. All, all, all is different here, and I still can't see us even on the show because the ads are lasting me like seventeen oh. minutes. It's just very frustrating. I didn't you know we were live. Something. Hi, everybody. Interesting, Hello. really interesting couple of weeks we've been having. And not yeah. very many people here yet. We should maybe I'll maybe I'll ping again. I don't know. Uh, there's uh, one yeah, but... exciting, exciting time we had yesterday. How is everything in EVE Online? What you been up to, Alterari? How did this all come about? Or do you have an agenda, Dave? Oh, well, that was the first question, actually. How did it happen? Because I turned up nearer the end, because I had just woken up, and it was all like, we need another fleet. So I was like, I suppose I can do it. So what, what happened? Are, and so what What was your involvement? You just, did you, was the fight still going on when you arrived? I couldn't actually keep yeah, track. Yeah, I had a uh, sacrilege fleet uh, with Tackle, uh, E-War, Webs, not Webs, sorry, Scrams, um, and we were holding down the Dreads and killing Dreads at the same time, um, which is essentially what I did. But uh, I have no idea how it happened, or honestly, well, I know what the thoughts were, but, you know. Heck yeah, okay, well, I mean, I, I'll start with the sort of the basics of story time, and then we'll let Alterari talk about strategy and operations. Um, it, we have had a, a fort in the system in Amazon for a while, uh, that a bunch of people use. It's pretty convenient. The gate there happens to connect pretty close to Jita, which is is nice. Um, and when when we moved in, there were some locals who were there, um, but they didn't. They mess with us just a little bit, not a lot. Uh, and we figured, hey, we're bringing a lot more targets to the system. As a matter of fact, since you know, don't tell anybody, but it's a lot of jump freighter pilots use this place, um, and so they didn't really mind us being there. Um, <clears throat> some time passed. And then uh, some some politics happened. I won't go into the details, but some corporations moved around, and all of a sudden, some people that that are bitter exes of ours were in a, a low sec group that we had been, uh, you know, thinking of as friendly. And these guys started hitting the fort, um, and not not necessarily friendly. We, we've been neutral the entire time, right? But you know, they had worked with us on various things occasionally. They, you know, we weren't enemies. All of a sudden, the fort's getting wrecked. And it looked like it was just actually one dude who was a sort of cross citizen of Spectre Fleet and and this low spec alliance Deepwater Hooligans, and and he was bringing Spectre Fleet, and these are the locals. So we're like, you know, we'll, you know, we'll play ball. And we brought a bunch of bullshit and got the the fort wrecked a number of times. Went back and forth, and then finally last week. It wasn't. It wasn't just the one guy with Spectre Fleet. It was all of Deepwater Hooligans, and they brought all of BFL, the Pappy Sir Sig, you know, headliner. Stayed up till five a.m. It was really. It was interesting. It was like all of a sudden the Pappy signal is lit. So of course we start hoofing based on that because it turns out this is all. It was all a Pappy thing to begin with. It's all all Gavin's idea. Uh, so we formed big last week when we formed big. They didn't show, and this week when we formed big, they did show. Uh, and that, so I'll leave you with that, the setup, <laughs> and let Alterari talk more about the details. Uh, but we really, we, we looked at this as a chance to uh, get a fight out of these guys, something that other pieces of the Alliance have been complaining about. And they indicated they were willing to fight, and we also wanted that, and fight we did. So yeah, um, 
it started off more or less at what level uh, of importance is this for to, our, to us is that me and Kazan are talking about it in uh, DMs. And I was informed it was extremely important for it. So I opted to propose bringing a small squad of dreads. And I was expecting maybe 40 to 50 and resulted in getting 98 on the first form that we got blue balled on. And then last night, or the day before yesterday, we ended up mitting another, I'd say, 60 or 70 dreads, so Thursday. And then before the time of yesterday at 2300, we formed to grab the rest of the stragglers and the EU guys that were going to stay up. And then we started mitting them from 1DQ. We made it to our final midpoint with 130 dreads about 45 minutes before the timer. Um, yeah, and at that point, we logged off and just waited for things to kick off. Subcaps fleet started going out. Uh, then the engagement kicked off. Snuffed was not logged in or anything yet. Uh, Big Ab had jumped in their TFI fleet, three dreads, three or four dreads and three or four faxes. And then uh, they warped to their standard... Jesus. They warped to their standard... 300 kilometers off the backside of the Fort Azar. Mm -hmm. We engaged them with our subcaps, seeing if we could break a dread. We weren't breaking it as fast as I wanted to, so I opted to commit five or six Phoenix Navies. Mm -hmm. And the, the first part of the subcap engagement was truly a gong show. From the from our perspective, a number of things went down. You know, right, uh, We had a fleet lose info boosts. Another fleet was out of position and didn't know its own range. So we were really failing to apply DPS across all of, all of the fleets in a serious way. So two, sub, two dreadnoughts back-to-back -back got out of siege and got reps, even though we had gotten them into structure. Hold on. Didn't know its yeah. own range. Yes, uh, so they were, uh, to get the fleet together, I gather they had been a little janky with the fits, and so they were about 15 kilometers short of where they wanted to be when they got in position, was what I understood, and then, so the, and another fleet lost info boost, and that was, I think, 20, 20 clicks of loss, and so there just was forever, and there was, no, we did not get a dread kill until we escalated, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so once we got those PNIs on grid, they were able to at least push the dreads and push the escalation. Uh -huh. And then we did and, start killing dreads once they were on field, yeah. Yeah, and Sedition was the first group of dreads to drop. They were told by Pappy to drop on us. And then when they dropped, we counter-dropped with, I, I think that was like seven RNIs, right? Rev Navies. Uh -huh. And then at that point, BFL dropped their T1 dreads. They didn't bring any Zerns or any Navy dreads. And then we brought in the rest of our short-range dreads. And then they hammer-dropped. At that point, we were fully committed with our short range and our PNIs. We brought our Zern wing in, uh, 35 or 40 Zerns at uh, 90 kilometers off of the Dread Brawl. And then uh, Snuff logged in at that point. I looked over to my Raka eyes, and they spiked Raka over 300. And they started mitting. Uh, I think they ended up with 160 Dreads and a subcap fleet. So it was one of those tank as long as you can we're on our way and right yeah and we were brawling the entire time and it the impression that i got i was in the subcap fleet the entire time and so my experience of this battle was extremely negative because we were tilted the entire time we were not happy we were not achieving very much but meanwhile the, as the dread brawl went on things seemed to only improve right the the escalation path seems to have gone well for us and we started really evening things out i think by the time snuffed arrived it was i'm get i been given to understand a pretty even BR. Yeah, when the Zerns dropped, we so initially <laughs> we'll step back. Initially, prior to jumping the Zern Eaters in, we refit them to uh, from two damage mods to a single damage mod and more tank because I expected to have to brawl with them for a while while we waited on Snuff to get in. Mm -hmm. And the second the Zerns dropped, they just started dumping damage into the hostile Dread Fleet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dave, yeah, I... if you want to pull up the BR, you can see how much damage yeah. the Zerns did, and it's a it's a ridiculous amount of damage in such a short period of time. We probably don't. I don't know if we even have a tool for this, but I'd love to see a breakdown of like every ten minutes of the fight. And we and do have a tool dies. for this, and I'm actually putting that together as we speak. I'm I'm stoked for that. That'll be exciting. So yeah, you yeah. were the Zerns did well <laughs> a metric ton. Um... As you can see here, most of them did um, upwards of like 300 to 
the top one I think I just saw was like 700, yeah, 708k damage. Yeah, uh, no, there's a really... zone that did like a million damage. Hold on, I'm looking, I'm looking. There's a lot of zones. Uh, oh, that one's close. 913. Yeah. Yeah, 913. Um, which is impressive. I, <laughs> like, a little bit overpowered. Um, but those numbers there alone, like, none of those dreads would have withstood those Zenitras once they'd spooled up. And then right, yeah, I mean, else on grid, like... well, it, 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 to really counter drop, let's assume that there is no snuffed out. No one is coming to help us. And we have to brawl that out. Even in that situation, the Zerns being the end of our escalation really, really helps because to the other way, you have to get on top of them with something. And by them being the end, essentially you have, you're saying they have to escalate to something that they're not prepared with, right? Or that is of a higher class in order to deal with that. So that seems like it was pretty effective to draw out that way. I think we tried to use a different strategy with smaller groups of Zerns one time uh, that I remember, and it ended up not working out so good, which there are other, there are many complicating factors, right? But that did turn out pretty well. It was, yeah. I think the hardest part of this entire fight for me was not jumping the gun. And making hmm. sure that I maintain the escalation path that was established prior to the fight. Right. I mean, it honestly was on edge or felt that way from the subcap perspective. Once we started getting dread kills, it doesn't feel that way. But there is always a risk that you feel that you're trying to catch up, right? That you're adding the caps because you feel like you need to. And then you're you're going to quickly get outgunned. And we managed to do it in such a way that a couple of our waves of that were overpowering to them and put them on the back foot and i think that that worked out quite well we can actually so. see the the timeline of the battle um so oh, yeah good. as you said there's the the boost starting to get absolutely uh -huh. annihilated yeah um then them hating on um Dracarys a bit there um then we, we start to turn the tide a little bit. Scorpion Navy down, got Stork down. Yeah, uh, this is all this is all just crap. Just keep, trash, you gotta go yeah. a few minutes in, yeah. And we keep going down, trash, trash. We've got a Balgorn dead on our side there. Um, so we're starting to see the first load of battleships get killed uh, on our side. Um, still trash, little stuff. Little stuff still. I think it's about 30 minutes into the... the here we go. There's the... There we go. So there's our first Dread going down. And then there's theirs. Um, so they were winning the Dread fight initially. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think when we had gotten probably four or five down, we were down like 11 ourselves. Like, like the, the initiation was not good. But <laughs> yeah, uh, that's how it is sometimes. Um. Yeah, and then as we go down, Nagafars, rest in peace. Um, I love Nagafars, but they're okay. Nothing of value is lost. Upgrade yeah, to a Revelation Navy. Um, and then we got more revs of theirs going down. So it, it, this is where the the dread fight really starts to, I would say. Who's the Who's the first dread of theirs to to drop? I miss the name. I do recognize some of these losses though. So there's one. I think... We'll magic laser I just yeah that's laser. right magic yeah. laser um and then if we find where the zenitras came in it's probably where there's a ton of dreadnoughts just in there dying um yeah so it's still pretty evenly traded except they seem to we seem to have stopped losing as many dreads um no there's still one or two strange but yeah quite a few so it's back and forth and then why don't yeah, we pull up there. pull up uh let me let me go to my logs and look for the exact timing um... i do have to say one of my favorite moments of the fight was going over global and telling people not to shoot snuff and then kaz immediately following up confirming that it was it was entertaining. Let's look at uh, ten to three. So o two fifty. Oh, that we are here. So this is still before snuff shows up, 
And we yeah, see. Snuff so we turned lose. Up as I arrive. Uh, uh-huh. Which was. So I started forming my fleet. And actually, I can just go look at the. Um, let me get up the. I'll get up the pings. And we can just actually go look at the timeline of our stuff. So, what do you think they're going to try this again? They certainly well, seemed willing to keep reffing it. Yeah, they seem adamant. Uh, snuff arrive around this time, because this is when I was approaching uh, the area. Um, but they do seem I adamant. I can this tell is... you when they started forming. Hold on. This is, um, what, how many times they left this now? Uh, three times prior to this. Yeah. Um, so they, they keep doing it, and they keep failing on the timers. So who knows? Honestly, it's proven to be quite a good uh, lightning. So 0255 is about when Snuff jumped in. Right, yeah. Why has my camera gone? And then Brave uh, immediately focusing everything, at least their Zern wing, on uh, Sandrin's alt, which is just absolute chef's kiss. Everyone, everyone had a few unresolved therapy sessions from the war, it felt like. I, felt, I thought about I working that did. into the ping. Yeah. I was calling targets out once we knocked off all the small stuff. I was calling targets out based on uh, p- people Grudges. I knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I remember there was one dog fork guy. I'm... I remember when they used to be in da- uh, games. I can't remember who it was. You remember Global where you guys were like, oh, it's that guy. Um, I can't remember their name now. Um, uh, there were several of those times. Yeah, I know. Uh, Pitts. It was Pitts. Sydney no, Crosby. it wasn't Pitts. It was after that. Um, was it after that? It was the one that Bodog had all of Oh, Mapache. Yeah. Uh, that's the one, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that one, I had all of um, my fleet's sensor damps go on so it couldn't actually really lock anything at all um it, uh its lock range was probably tiny and then it just evaporated towards the end of the dread fight though that, that's literally how it was happening though the dreads were just evaporating even in tie-dye because we had everything shooting them because they'd pretty much been abandoned honestly in deep tie-dye like that i was surprised that things were dying as quickly as they were like we were not able to keep all of our targets called i will I want to say props to the server, as a oh, matter yeah, of fact, that like we had almost three thousand people there. In spite of being ten percent tight, I I don't think a single person I heard complain about like modules getting stuck, or like five second call times like we had in the last big throwdown whenever that was a few weeks back. Not like that at all. Uh, I was one of the FCs I was working with. Arcadios complained about like having leggy client issues. I think he might have been on DirectX 14 or something. I don't know for sure. Um, but that, in comparison to some of the fights we've had since TQ Tech Five, it was it was shockingly good. So I don't know what they did. I don't know what they changed. But I'm going to mention it to CCP that this was you know it was pleasant as these things go. You know, I know that we didn't file a node reinforcement ticket, but I feel mm-hmm. like. Big App they definitely have. did, yeah, mm-hmm. because the servers oh. performed way too good to not be reinforced. I I am inclined to agree with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that I makes mean, a lot of sense. Also, in in the past, we've definitely had issues with things like guns not cycling, um, especially with missile yeah. doctrines. And I didn't get a single complaint from my guys. We didn't have any of that. Oh my god, reload times are, yeah, you know, but reload times. It was it was there. ten or fifteen percent the majority of the time. But um, the Phoenix, my guys were shooting. We were shooting him with just drones, and we got we got him down to like eighty percent in no time at all. Mm-hmm. So. There was a moment where they warped some TFIs on top of our rocks into antimatter range. The TFIs didn't last very long. That was a highlight <laughs> of the fight for the subcaps. That I don't is... know why they decided that, but. Definitely you a know. decision of all decisions. The, the there was a moment where the day. nightmares came into the very edge of thorium range, and Arcadio started really tunneling on one, and we got, I think, like three or four nightmare kills before they got out of there, but just, just adds to the butcher's bill a little bit. What was the final tally? Like over 600 um, on their side? In this system, so fun. Uh, the final tally was 600 almost dead on on their side. Mm. 389 on our side. 
So I do have a funny thing that happened when I was extracting my fleet because I had to go to work. So it turned out we were jumping into the high six system at the same time as all their fleets. Now, Pamfam, in their divine wisdom, decided, hey, Dave's fleet's here. He's going to run. Let's shoot his boosters and stuff. You know, the expensive stuff. You are very cowardly. It makes sense. I know. You. Um, <laughs> so they do that, not realizing that not all of the Imperium are war decked to hoard. So they go and shoot, I believe it was a TNT guy. Suddenly, Concord Someone everywhere. Someone didn't turn their safeties and green when they gated into Shara, did they? Someone these boys forgot. started having a bad time. <laughs> um, oh. so, Thanks, yeah, they, Concord. They didn't have a good day. Um, that sounds, they didn't that's the amazing. Memo. I'll send my regards to the SCC. Yeah, so like you can even just see it here that they start shooting and then just good night. Sometimes, sometimes a misinformed citizen will ask me why we have these other alliances in the Imperium. <laughs> they <laughs> learned a reason. Uh, but um, uh, so yeah, do we know why they keep attacking? Me? Well, I, I have a hunch if they know why we have it there, but like, a bit odd to randomly just start attacking one of our forts, isn't it? Well, I mean, it, it seems obvious that someone in Panfam got wind of this. Orbs, it's not that hard to observe, right? Udama Scout has Abazon in two columns of the Twitch play for Udama Scout, right? It's the only system that gets that much attention other than Udama. It's right. It's the gate to Genesis and the whole southern half of the map in that. It's just the reality. Everyone knows that, you know. You know. <laughs> so finally, it, it seems that Gobbins decided he wanted to do something about it, and now he has, and so have we. So we'll see what, what comes next. Um, I think they're, they're probably also trying to go for low-hanging fruit, because, that, that, let's be honest, their little campaign in Catch, they 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 got far, I'll give them that. They did some our, work. Our balls hang low all over the universe, yeah. TBH. Right. Yeah, they, they we went we went up Ketch. to the north for all that time. That didn't go mm. all that great, right? We have been going down to catch. We've come up to Amazon, right? It I there are times when various people again I feel like misinformed will say, oh, goons just turtle and delve. I mean, I don't I actually feel like that that's accurate. Just needs to be, you know, the right the right move. And I think there's a little bit of, of, of poor expectation setting happening here, right? You see this sometimes in politics where one one side will set up and talk about poorly about their political opponent and say, oh, you know, they're they're this, you know, they're this and they're this and they're this, and they can't do anything. And they end up really setting expectations low about the opposing politician by by juicing all of their people their base the people who listen to them up into believing that the other guy is just is a fool or is ignorant or is malicious and then that they actually see that politician and that's not true and they they run into this you know sort of lack of reality and i think that some of that occasionally happens here by constantly going out and saying oh goons won't show up oh they're just crabs oh they turtle and delve blah 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 they 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 start actually believing that Right, they forget that they're propagandizing and believe that we're just going to show up with bullshit. And sometimes we do often show up with bullshit. I'm not, you know, we're we're morons and mouth breathers on the on the best of weeks, and we'll bring harpies where we should have brought something more powerful. And that's happened on on this fort a number of times. And what happened? You know, we. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, I I I love working here. It you know it'll be a fucking cold day in hell probably before our hostels take us in any way seriously and i guess i have to be okay with that and here we are you know you would have thought after they couldn't take one constellation from us you know for almost a year i mean sure they're telling themselves that oh well now they're all gone and we won and good for them right they outlasted us in that sense um you know it's fine for them to crow about that victory um I, I don't think that it is wise for them to interpret the last couple of years of events as thinking that we won't do anything that will not go well for them. Right. It just, and I saw a lot of that, right. There was a debate in certain channels 
uh, last night, I fell asleep actually giggling to to some of the cope I was seeing. And I, well, is it cope? Well, uh, there's a, a lot of chatter about, oh, well, goons this and goons that. I think um, my favorite thing is they basically ignored the fact that we had dreads on grid and they were focused entirely on snuff bringing their dreads. Of course, I mean, yeah, of course, the, the ping, Gobbins is ping says, I don't know if we have it handy. I'd have to go find it. I have it. But he says, That's right, good. like, you know, and then when snuff started mitting to bail goons out, we we started getting out of there. Like, okay, if if you want to think that, if you want to believe and you want your members to believe that you are always going to win a fight with us unless snuff comes to bail us out, you can keep telling your guys that. Right, I, I'm I'm helping you. Right, I'm describing that narrative right here on the show. If they if Pan Fan wants to believe that, go for it. I'll copy and paste it into yeah. chat real quick. Well, do you want to send me just like a sanitized yeah. picture and I'll put it up on the thing? But that that that's the thing. They underestimate the enemy a lot. They did it in the north. Um, yeah, when we went up there, we we pushed them back. I mean, they. It didn't go too well when we returned to Delve and we're trying to do it the long way. But... Oh, you even got a special call out, Dave. What do you mean? Me? Who? Dave, oh, you got a special ping. call out on Goblin Spain. Oh, wow. nice. It's been a it's been a hot minute since I've had one of them. Um so yeah, like it didn't go too well towards the end because quite frankly, our members they get they get bored, they want to do something new. They wanna, you know. And what we were doing in the north wasn't very sustainable. Yeah. Well, and then Horde only yeah, brought that... T one dreads, which is yeah. why why what the hell is the and point then, of that? Yeah, and then in in today's meta where dreads, like even we when we we tend to go on the cheaper option compared to our you know enemies, we're, we're saying get T two dreads, get your your pods. You know, it's the meta. Yeah, if absolutely. Yeah, we meta, did upgrade our whole dread on with that. Fight in the wake of, of Forteke. So it, it's, and, but, and, and it seems that they have, they walked into this thinking that it were just going to re- repeat themselves by snapping their fingers with what happened last summer. But the situation was completely different. And that right, wasn't, we got, uh, no Goblin boys ping over here. Um, do, 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 do. I haven't actually read this cause I'm bad at keeping track of stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. He shouted out your monitor lost mail after getting his fleet oh, concorded. No. Was that it? Yeah. So what happened with that? That's funny that he's doing that. So um, I didn't try to chase them. As I said, I I had work, so I was like, I even said over global, guys, I've got work. I'm taking my fleet back, and we started heading. And then was it you, Altai, or one of the others went, uh, Dave? You know you're jumping with them. Right? I think that was vintage. Yeah, and I was like, oh, really? Oh, well, we'll see how this goes. Um, and yeah, then he gets concorded. What he's missing is um, my fleet got away other than my boosters, which are the, the slow dudes. Acceptable losses, in my opinion. The bulk of the fleet got away. I then, in half structure, crashed the gate, got back to our fort, and then decided maybe the coast is clear and got several jumps more before they even caught me so you know he as usual is missing half of the narrative and what's so special about a monitor loss i can just get it you know again good this is what i'm i'm i'll I'll put my asher hat on here for a second right this is a communication for all the people who are sitting there in pan fam being mad at goons if you got if you want to sit there and think that this is important that that monitor loss mail is important and that that tells you something about what happened in the fight. Go ahead. I, we can't stop you. Right. But this, <laughs> you're not, I don't feel like you're really getting the straight dope here, which I mean, is, I mean, that's, it's tough often to navigate losses. Right. But the, again, it's setting people up to think that, that we got bailed out and that's the only thing going on here. I'm I'm excited for next time. It makes me want to take the next fight and hope that Snuff is offline and see what happens then. You know, uh, bring it on. Yeah, so he, he's bragging about me losing a monitor. Hold up. So, um, let's see. Monitor, that's the one I lost the other day. Oh, look, a monitor. Wait for it. 
Wait for it. Down here a sec. Another one. And another one. It's not special, you know? I just sent you another fun screenshot. Do you want to show yeah, that? The amount of times... So it might... My, my, their idea is if the FC loses their monitor, that's a big thing. A good a good thing to note, for instance, um, at one of the dudes that's now I've seen first, Jeremy, I actually, when he came over to us, I gave him a monitor back that he jumped out of because apparently him surviving <laughs> and not having that lost nail was more important, so I stole the, his monitor. Now, the that's crucial, the, the that's crucial the FC was thing about. Right, yeah, the crucial FC was in the Fortisar and he lived. You know, it. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was definitely or, calling targets from the Fortizar. <laughs> or, um, or like, what was it? Uh, several hostile FCs muskies done it a couple of times. They will warp their fleet off, which is the right thing to do. If your monitors tackle, get your fleet out of them. Uh, They're more important right. than you. Fuck your kill board. Mm. But they then scream for their fleet to come back, and I've heard them do it to right, save yeah. their monitor, and it's just like what are you doing right the wrong thing it's okay like, don't interrupt them exactly yeah but it's just stupidity really um this is what alto i just sent me the uh oh i actually had this saved but yeah the um copium folks the copium. let's see what i'm gonna i'm gonna get the timeline on that one um so yeah they they one thing i never get about our enemies is we always try to be as truthful as possible we may put a little bit of spin on it we ping about the funny stuff we never go we'll totally oh my God, we killed musky's monitor we'll totally ping. we'll totally put a lot of spin on something yeah. right in a certain situation but, but i don't lie. i don't feel like we really desperately misrepresent what is happening yeah. <laughs> it's one thing that was ingrained into me when i was a coward you never lie to our members right. unless for whatever reason it is utterly required i'm operational security is a totally yeah. different topic it just can get left out here that's not what we're talking about yeah exactly. the sort of the the post the pre-game and the post-game narratives are not about are not usually yeah. about like security and stuff of course we didn't link that uh, we didn't leak a possibility that we might get a little help <laughs> of we course. kept that very very tight to the yeah, chest that i think was very maybe four people knew about that so um but, but that of we, I, I hope that we will continue to be the sort of place where I don't feel like we put that sort of thing in yeah. a ping. Um, so with, we'll see. With, for instance, with the the snuff thing, yeah, it was like, yeah, they came to him because they love fights, and it was in their area. You fight in snuff's area, they're gonna turn up, and if they're fighting on your side, happy days, because at the end of the day, unless you're f like in hordes that all. I don't know, bully circle, because let's be honest, they threaten everybody. We've had we've done our share of threats, but we don't go, you're gonna attack these people you know, or fuck you as much. We've done it. We we have I mean what we have not done that I we've seen a lot of from Panfam, it just in the past this this is a sort of thing I think Brisk would have notes on and I've only seen it cross in certain like intel briefings but it, it seems like there's some space changing hands in insmother right now for example where a couple different alliances are giving up space to hoard directly uh that were formerly in the southeastern agreement and then they bent the knee to gobbins first and now they're essentially abandoning their you know they're having their space taken to become part of horde space directly instead in insmother we i can't remember the last time we did something like that uh same 2015. thing yeah, right, exactly. Right. We learned our lesson very well and repented of that type of behavior, I feel like. And that it I mean, they all they did the same, not this exact thing, but they also had other alliances in the area bend the knee. We got an you know, communications documenting that they were asking either for Ansible Excessius or saying that systems had to be transferred or whatever. There were several of these. Um because that is you know, either strategically useful for them, or in the case of Insmother, they want more money, right? They're renting all of that space that's in their documentation. Mm -hmm. um, they they are a, a threat if they feel like they can take it and do something, and and they'll they'll just run you over. So I don't know what the solution to that is long term. We haven't come up with one, right? Uh, out in the corner of space. That, but that's why I don't feel like we just sit and delve. It's required for us to figure out how to reach out and go around because that's our 
one of our big roles is preventing Panfram from getting too big for their britches and causing too many problems for I the mean, rest of the universe. If you look at the, the, the stream, I've just put the map up. First of all, mm -hmm. oh my god, Test actually has an imprint on it now. How long is that going to oh. last with the, their <laughs> two members and their ten alts? They showed up um, at 14 last night. Ooh. That's just one of his alts, though. And then it, they didn't learn any lessons from us. It was before my time, but when we lived up the north, you know, we did, you know, we had a large footprint. It's going to bite them in the ass. And it's I, at least a lot more possible, right? Right now, I don't think, you know, for example, there was a while back where I think a certain alliance when Test was living in Outer Passage went and, and took a bunch of Outer Passage from Test. Hmm. And it was at least a minute until Panfan proper showed up and threw them out of there. But the problem was they didn't, you know, it really didn't matter that they took that floodplain for so and so long. You know, yeah. it's only, it only ends up mattering if you permanently change the nature of space right now and who settles where. And that's a, that's a big problem with game mechanics that, you know, we'll probably be talking about for another 12 months. But I do think that if that were different, and if it were, if it mattered more that you lost a constellation for just a little while, then certainly Panfam is so spread out that they would have challenged, you know, supporting a border war against all of their border at once. If you imagine that all of their border is vulnerable, hypothetically, and who might attack it and that it could be worthwhile, their border is simply four times as large as ours is. So. Well, a good example is Catch. They took most of Jakarta's space in Catch. They've now, well, I'm going to say they've retreated, because let's be honest, they're still in the area, but what are they doing? Yeah, they certainly, I mean, their combined powers are dominant in Chinese time zone, and I don't think we ever expected different, really. Um, we don't, <clears throat> you know, we well, tried, we tried guys, to be competitive in various gonna... ways. But so, yeah, if, if they're coming down all the time and leveraging Zarzak and putting 100% or 110% into it in that time zone, certainly we have felt challenged mm -hmm. and like we're going to lose space. But again, this is exactly the point. Did it matter that they took that space? Well, in this case, it actually did because there were some semi-permanent changes. Those organizations, some of them that were there either fell apart, changed sides, bent the knee, live elsewhere, disbanded. That does make an impact. Um but did they financially gain from holding that space? And is it what's going to happen now if they can't maintain that, right? They're leveraging Zarzak and all these other, you know, deploying to curse and all this stuff to make that happen. What is the end game, right? And they're always, right now under current mechanics, there always has to be an end game where a steady state can be found. And that hasn't been found yet, at least. I mean, uh, going back to the there's no long, like, long lasting punishment for losing salt. You, you, you're very right. So with Catch, for instance, give it a few more weeks and the, the places we've taken back, it will be at 30 days again and we can put jump bridges, we can do this, we can do that. You know, it's like resetting the clock. Look what we did in Dow after they left. There's no... Yeah, I mean, it. it's interesting in this particular case because it, was not, it wasn't just a floodplain that we controlled, right? There were a lot of people living there that we didn't have any sort of deal with as a matter of fact <laughs> there are other people who were they they had either for example a partial deal with your or they had there was there's one case i read and i i won't give the name because i don't want to like leak and jam them up but they said you know your didn't ask for anything for us to live here we just came looking for a spot and they were like hey no one is living here we don't mind and and so, of course, they got thrown out. It was far too far for us to legitimately defend them. We didn't have that sort of arrangement with them. But they got rolled over exactly as if they were a goon pet. And I guess you could. there's a perspective from which you could say that that's true, but it's a really narrow and distant perspective, in my opinion. So there is that impact with these floodplain wars. But is that permanent? Well... It depends only if they actually disband and change. And what is more likely to happen is that that changes their alignment and they're more willing to work with us or they go find something else to do. So it's not like there are not impacts, um, but just the seizing of the constellation, I don't think it is of great benefit to fraternity that they won for a month, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like with us, the way I see it is we have the space that we want. I mean, we've got more than enough space. 
people, what reason do we have to go and steamroll little guys on our border? As long as they're not, you know, being a problem for us, it's like live and let live, you know? Right, yeah, exactly. Because we don't, we don't want the ass end of bloody catch. Like, it's just a pain in the ass. They want to force okay. us to want it, right? Exactly. Again, it's the same as with the Amazon thing. You keep poking us enough, and eventually we'll change our minds, I guess. You throw I don't enough know. shit at the wall, and eventually it might stick. Well, and, but, and on top of it, we're not going to burn our FCs out by sending them to fight in the ass ends of Eve for no reason on something that does not matter strategically right, to yeah, us. Yeah, uh-huh. That's the big thing. If somebody tells me to go to like the Provi side of catch and defend them, I will just go, but why? Like, yeah, but why? <laughs> yeah, it's like Another... whenever it was, we've got to defend this thing, like over by. Uh, oh shit! It's like, but why? Yeah, what's yeah. the like, point? Um, yeah, and especially against the full, the full, yeah. full court press type of assault. I'd rather be know, playing hell divers than zone. sitting in a tie dye slug fest over something we don't care about. Yeah. Oh. Um. Or ratting, for that matter. I've recently taken up Stormbringer ratting. Good times. <laughs> and then I found out my alt court's overdue by about 800 days on 1 million esque. <laughs> so I was just kind of like, ooh. Um, anyway, I think we've we've beaten that horse to death a bit. I do have some of uh, your cousin here. The uh, oh, TTC boy. and the impact of us, yeah, pretty much kaboom, because you're the money. This man. is actually <laughs> this is actually really interesting because I sort of am it was great to get the kills, right? And I I am very one of my I think my only official kill mail on my not main Kazmir is a is a target paint of a fighter on the original TTC Keepstar. I you know, I got a paint on Villy before getting disconnected or having to go AFK. I was traveling that day. Um so meaningful to me at the same time if you actually stare directly at the reality, the reality is previously the uh, player tax minimum was 1%. And of that, under pre-Viridian mechanics, players were getting half of it. So you're getting 0.5. If you set the minimum, you would get 0.5%. Okay. Now, after post-Viridian, right after the change for the Excel structures, they also changed the market taxes such that the minimum was now 0%, right? And they also changed it so that the SCC would not be half of the players. It would just be a flat 0.5. So now the players can set whatever they want. And that means that the TTC is occasionally having to compete with people setting zero or setting 0.1%. And so the TTC also shifted to a 0.1%. And they've been at that with those Satios ever since they, they went up from zero sometime, I think last fall or this winter, you know, six, eight months, something like that odd but what that means is knowing the previous income of the ttc keep star which let's say it maxed out at one and a half trillion a month that and that's a long time ago actually it was not that much when we shot it a year ago if it's that much and it was split between these people now it's at most it is at most a fifth of that because it's 0.1 instead of 0.5 okay so you're talking at most 300 billion and presumptively a lot less because not nearly as much stuff is traded even with the plex traders in there as as it used to be you know so it is i believe it was impactful on them but is it is it nearly as big of a deal as, as blowing up the original thing actually no <laughs> um so it, this is another thing where they demonstrated that they would give us fights and it was important to them and we we kept hitting in and got a couple of fights out of them that we lost <laughs> and then the stars aligned and it came together and we we got it right um and did not get distracted and got the kills and it was it was a lot of fun you know and then it leads to other things like them getting concord and shooting the wrong imperium alliance <laughs> uh, they also did this this is a really weird maybe i should i should have these things ready when i come on the show to put them on blast some weirdo took his cor 50 corporations made 50 shell corporations a shrimple solution and joined his 50 shell corporations, a shrimple solution, zero through 50, into Pandemic Horde. By joining them into Horde, they adopted our war deck, which is a, an aggressive war deck on Horde. And then promptly left Pandemic Horde with all 50 shrimple solution corporations. 
resulting in us having now an aggressive war deck against all 50 of them. I don't know why, other than trying to trick us into paying 50 extra war bills, which I guess is 5 billion isk a week. It's just, I don't, I don't get it. So I, I mean, maybe they're just trolling and wasting my time, which fair enough, I suppose. But like, I don't, I don't see the point. It's very odd. Oh, yeah, no, Seema's got it in minutes. chat. His solution doesn't seem very shrimple. <laughs> well, they're probably like, oh, it's cost them five billion is which to that one guy, five billion is a week, maybe quite a bit. Maybe he just loves to be but, annoying. I don't know. When, I don't get it. There's so many have, better ways to annoy me, though. When we have members that are making way more than that and then paying <laughs> way more than that in tax a day, <laughs> oh, okay, we're getting we're getting intel in chat. Apparently, we're being told they moved all of their air, their Athenors into those little shell corps. Okay, okay. and that helps. So fair, do. fair enough. Maybe I if that well, that's good though. So that means I still have the option of going and finding out which Athenors belong to which and keeping the war decks I want. And all they're doing is making me pay a little more if I want the Athenor kills. Lagoons, we don't care. So I, I love being able to work out intel like this and. In public channels on TMS. This is fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Like, how many times have we we been in command channels out of and somebody like Kazanir or way back when Mittens went, just throw Isk at the problem. That's happened. Like, it works sometimes, absolutely. It's all about just it knowing when it's gonna work on as not. well. I um, mean <clears throat> honestly, it's not it's not just about that. That's an element of it, right? You have to be willing to throw this, get a problem in order to get to the holy behavior that you want, which mm -hmm. is that you want to cause them damage, right? There was it's a moment where it was problem. sort of, where it was touch and go during the fight yesterday. And we had the opportunity to sort of kumbaya on command and go and reunify around saying, we are here to cause them as much damage as possible. If we lose the fort, that can be okay. Right. If we lose the BR, that can be okay. We just want them to pay in skulls because they're fucking cowards. You know. The last thing you want to and do. I made is that use... very clear before we even thought about starting the well, fight. Right. Yeah, um, and so the last thing once... you want to do is lose a sorry a trillion square for dreadnoughts over Fortazar. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to do it if you're the only one losing them, right? Yeah. But if we, if honestly, if we had lost twice as much and the BR was not in our favor, I would still be happy with telling them it's going to cost you 500 billion is to mess with our fort, right? It, it comes back to the, the, the M2 sort of thing, really. Who can replace them quicker? You know? Like, we'll talk about that someday. Yeah, that, I mean, we, we, but it's the, the basics. you got to look at how much will it cost us and can we recover from it half the time? Yeah, and is it worth it? We had yeah. a question about the the keep star in uh, F4O, and honestly, I think the the current consensus is it's not really. It does kind of come under the we don't really care. Like, well, it sick. depends what we want to do. Yeah. If we were to decide, hey, we're going to settle catch, right? We want to restore it to being settled space. Then, of course, that does matter. We got to get rid of it. Otherwise, it's going to be a potential problem. You know, you can't settle a region around it. But we don't necessarily want that. We didn't do that originally, right? Dracarys ended up there because no one else was living there, and they tried to give away as much of the space as we could, right? We started getting nonsense from from hostels. Like, a, a long time ago, there's, like, records on other shows I went on of people hassling me about impasse and blah, blah, blah. There's these posts on the forums, and these people are renting, renting space and impasse. Oh, no, like, no, of no, course, no. we don't rent, <laughs> but these people who were semi-affiliated with us and took space on a region next to our border region ended up renting a few systems. Did we create that situation? No. Are we going to go and restore that type of situation by putting our whole military into it? Absolutely not. So for the time being, you're right. The FRR keep star doesn't matter in that sense. Um, but it will be good to see if we can get another 500 billion out of them over it. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, they're not using it we're not overly fussed about catch or that part of catch. The the important thing to remember is I don't think a lot of people realize when we when we get attacked or when we attack people, we, we have a proverbial line in the sand of we care about here, we don't care about here. The don't care about here is 
if you can have a fight, a fun fight, and you cause a lot of pain to the enemy, do it and do it again. The HY tap pause are, for instance. It's alive, surprisingly. Um, and it caused a lot of pain for them constantly trying to kill it. Right, right. yeah. If that and they, died, and they... oh wow. Sure, and they, but rather than, than dealing with it constantly, and rather than dealing with the siege fort aggressively, they instead chose to pull back and undeploy. And that this, this sort of war can go that way, then rather than going for a confrontation, one side backs off, and that's what we've seen here, right? They could have had a confrontation, and this 500 billion could have been a, a one and a half trillion esque fight a couple weeks ago over one of those forts or over their Keepstar, you know? Um, but it, it hasn't gone that way so far. In fact, as I recall, they've been refing their own Keepstar to get the timer that they want the past couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if this got tracked, uh, but evidently they they reinforced their own F4R keep star so that we could not get a weekend timer <laughs> given the timing of it. That was hilarious. So they, they seem to not want to fight. They seem to want to back off. I don't know. We'll see when the next 500 billion goes down. It's a really, I don't know. They never seem to I'm be interested to see even. what their next move is. Obviously, we're waiting on the changes in NullSec to, to happen for any big things to, any big chess pieces to move on this chessboard. But I'm curious to see how they're going to execute once those changes are live. The, the other I thing... mean, that, that will be a fascinating second half of the year, won't it? <laughs> Absolutely. The, the other thing to remember is they've been constantly in offensive mode and deployed quote-unquote mode for a long time and that takes a big toll like if is if that true keep... i mean they're their horde horde death their their drones expeditionary force is not deployed right horde main is not deployed but bfl is certainly everywhere and it, it that's a big portion of their leadership capacity as far as we can tell they're gonna burnout is an issue for line and and you know FCs. You see it a lot in FCs because it's very strenuous. Um, that, that's why a lot of us log in for, for fights and yeah, PvP and then go, you know what? Let's uh, go do something else. Um, and another thing that they do is they have these jump clones everywhere with their main fleet and then fucking AD doctrines everywhere as well. If you it's, turn around to our members and we want, we want your doctor and spread across the galaxy, first of all, as FCs, we would get irritated because it'd be like, we need this doctor and over here. Oh, because that's over there. Um, so you'd end up having the same doctrines all over the galaxy. And then yeah. not everybody gets on that withdrawal, and it's just a nightmare. Um, yeah, we do not we do not operate like that in most situations. We didn't we did end up like I threatened in the ping, stashing a bunch of battleships in Amazon. So we'll have even more rocks next time. You know, um, Frostmord hungers. Let's go. Um, but yeah, all right. Hey, thanks so much for having us, Dave. I guess we're close yeah, to the end here. We should wrap it up. I was about to say we're running out of uh, time a bit. Any final thoughts? Oh, I'm off the camera. Any final thoughts, uh, Kaz? Uh I guess, like I said, I'm wondering when the next situation will come together, if in fact it does happen before uh, before whatever changes people are anticipating. Um, I, I'd be excited to see that situation. Obviously, each side is only going to really take a fight if they think they can win. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to see. I thought this week was pretty entertaining, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay, now Uh Yeah, all I have to say is I'll fucking do it again. It was fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, that that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this uh, special edition. It kind of stemmed from me going, hey, Bush, do you mind if I get some people to talk uh, together to talk about what happened last night? Because let's be honest, you can't miss a chance to talk about something like that. And we've been busy for two weeks. You can't leave it for three weeks. Um, and, and it turned into this. So I hope you folks enjoyed it. Um, and we will see you next time. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Stay classy, New Eden. Yep.